Palmdale School District teachers and anybody else who's listening to this out there on the World Wide Web, what a week it has been. What a last couple weeks. It has been a whirlwind. Dan? How's everyone going? It, it's a whirlwind of a week. It, it can't even, doesn't even explain how this week has gone. It has been crazy. Uh, five days of trainings. Um, our tech department, who's been outstanding, has handed out almost 400 uh, Chromebooks to students in just a few days. I mean, it's just, I, I never thought that we would be somewhere where we are right now. Uh, Steve, what, what are your thoughts on how the week has gone? I'm exhausted. I'm sure every teacher is brain dead. I'm sure our office staff is stressed, and I'm sure our central office people have been dealing with things behind the scenes that we don't even have a clue about and are, are looking out for us, and we don't even know it, which leads me into this idea. Uh, it might be time for a little bit of a rant. Um, hopefully you won't take this the wrong way, people, and you'll look at this as something positive about this rant, or maybe you even think it's the ramblings of a lunatic, really. I've been trying not to be too grumpy, so please extend me some grace. Palmdale School District teachers, first off, you have been awesome. There's a lot of curious things happening throughout our district. There are so many teachers who are trying to make remote learning happen. Great. You know, teachers are unique people. They can step up to the plate like nobody else, and they take pride in what they do, and there's no doubt they really do love their students. But I want you teachers to remember this. You don't have to be on an island anymore. Work and plan with your colleagues. Be open to trying new things. Trying what you already know differently. If you're not sure, Google it. Reach out to your tech coaches and your other colleagues and start bragging about the good things that you're doing. Yet on another note, I've seen a lot of this in my emails. I'm really not a techie and I'm not very good at this stuff. You know what, guys? Stop putting yourself down for not knowing how to do some of this. You don't want your students to act that way. So you should model that growth mindset. The truth is, you'll fail. Just fail fast. Think about the movie Groundhog Day, the character in that Bill Murray. Every day he learns from his mistakes little by little. That's a growth mindset. He gets out of his predicament by correcting his mistakes and moving on. That's growth. So yet, quit thinking you're going to take your old pedagogical practices and force them to work in this new paradigm. I know you want things to be the way they were. They're not. Stop being rigid in your thinking and your practice. First, some of your students are never going to even meet you online. They're not going to look at the schedules you want them to follow or have a device even available when you are available. They will learn at different times of the day. Some won't care about your work at all. Their parents or, or parents are essential workers and have to be in harm's way. Giving them tons of work and giving lessons on Zoom won't mean nearly as much as that Zoom meeting where you connect with them on a personal level, checking in and asking how they are doing. Now, if you think you've got a pretty good handle on things right now, which may or may not be true, and I question myself as, at times with that as well, uh, someone else, and if someone else is now pressuring you to do more, keep in mind that they're feeling their own unique pressure to perform inside as well. They're just extending those feelings to you. Take a breath. Take a step back. It may be an opportunity to validate your feelings, or it may be Time to push back on expectations that are simply unreasonable. We are all in a crisis here. Everybody in this world, not just us as teachers. We are going stir crazy and we're trying hard to keep so busy and pushing on students and colleagues. Now, let, let's me stop here. I hope this rant doesn't offend anybody. A couple podcasts ago, I mentioned extending grace. We are all experiencing some anxiety, whether we admit it or not. And at the end, end, we need to let it go. We need to take a breath, take a walk, understand that everyone, and I mean everyone, from the president down to the cat on the couch, cat's still trying to figure out why you're home all the time, 
they're all trying to deal with a huge problem. Teachers, I know we will do the best we can, but don't expect it to mirror a day in your classroom. Again, it's not. It's been difficult for me at times to step back and, and not be upset at people or offended at people. And I need to remind myself that I need to have compassion uh, for the difficulties both mentally and or physically people are experiencing. You know, that's sympathy. And I really need to understand putting myself in other sho other's shoes. That's empathy. Without both, it is hard to extend any grace to anybody. I often don't come across that way. I apologize. So if I've offended or hurt anybody's feelings, gave the impression that I don't care because the email response was one word, short, impersonal, impersonable, or I sorry, impersonal, it's probably because I've looked at 2,000 emails in the last three weeks. And I apologize. So uh, out of me not looking outward, I'm sorry on that. So with that, I'd like to bring in my co-host, Dan. Um, do we have anything we'd like to comment on that rant before we bring in a special guest here in a few minutes? And, and I definitely want to get to our special guest. But, you know, a couple of things I just want to say is just remember that there's a whole lot of you and a few of us. And we are trying to help take care of you all. Uh, this week, our emails, texts, phones, Facebook, any type of connection that we have that is outside of ourselves have all blown up trying to get help for you. Uh, we hear you. We see you. We are here to help you. And we are asking that you don't go down this road alone. Invite us in to help develop your new distance learning pedagogy. Uh, you have four credentialed teachers ready and willing to walk this new blaze trail with you. Be patient with us as we try to answer your questions, and sometimes they may be short. And like Steve said, it's because we have you know, your one email of many. So uh, extend that great to us. We're, we're trying to get through that, uh, that list of emails to try to answer all of your questions. But we simply ask, let us in. Sometimes a quick five-minute Zoom meeting can cover so much more than an email chain back and forth over a course of a few hours. So let us in. Like we've all said before, all week, it is going to be messy. We are going to get stuck on some things, but really, and the joke has been, to suck a little less every day. And when we do suck at something and it's not working, relax. Laugh at ourselves and reach out to all of us that can help you out. The ray of sunshine in this whole situation for me is that you'll be able, you will become a better teacher when we do go back to the classroom than when you started because your pedagogy will have improved it, improved. So take pride in that. And I think, you know, reading all the emails and talking to everybody over the last five, six, seven, 10 days, 12 days, I think there are some that are really taking pride in that. And I applaud you for doing that. And so that's kind of my take on, on this week as well. And I know Steve, we, we've talked about, you know, like, like, like the joke's been sucking a little less every day uh, and really getting to our kids. You know, I, I, I'd like to just encourage everybody to do uh, a couple things and fail fast, fix those mistakes, move on. Don't let it ruin your day or make you think you can't do it in the future. Try it out with colleagues first, fail it, fail it fast, fail it together because we're all in this together. But most importantly to me, I want none of you to start putting yourself down again. Imagine how far you've gotten in a week. Don't be afraid to click a button to see what it happens. <laughs> Go for it. You know. So on that note, anyway, let's bring in our, our special guest, Dan. Absolutely. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Elena Esquerra. Elena, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you both for inviting me to be a guest this evening. So how, how is uh, the last three weeks have gone? <laughs> how have they been? It has been, you know, a, a, a great opportunity. I, I really see it as a great opportunity for us to do different things and try some new things and take some risks. And, and really, you know, we are in this together. So I actually really appreciated your rant, Steve, and your message, Dan, because I think it's, we're all saying the same message out there to our teachers and to our families and to our students and, and to everyone who's, you know, in a new situation these last three weeks. Yeah, sometimes. Um, Elena, I know, I know I, I don't want you to go into a whole lot of detail because I know you guys have meetings, it seems like, all the time because things seem to change uh, fluidly. 
Um, but can you just give us a little peek on how you guys come up with some of the decisions that have been made over the last few weeks? Absolutely. You know, we've been very fortunate during this time to really have a collaborative uh, opportunity. We collaborate with our county office, our LACO office, uh, just about every other day. The first couple of weeks, it was about every day. And then it kind of tapered off to about every other day. And then they also set up some opportunities for us to meet together in job alike meetings. So, for example, I meet with the educational services team from LACO and um, Mr. Beardsley meets with the HR team and, and Dr. Yufondi meets with business office representatives from across the county, as well as Dr. Campbell, who meets with the student services and special education counterparts across the county. So we get a lot of information from them and they actually have provided a lot of guidance. They take their guidance in essence from the CDE, who also provides guidance to districts, but they tend to disseminate that information through the county. And then we, every other morning, actually meet with the county superintendent via phone, similar to um, Zoom meetings on, online, except these are on the phone. And all 82 districts are there, superintendents and cabinet members. And they are able to provide us with a lot of the ever-changing information. And, and you're right about that. The information has changed quite a bit. It seems like we're always saying that this information is good in this particular moment, because that's the phrasing that they use as well. And of course, we would like the information to stick and to actually do the information. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of these last three weeks has been about change because it's been a very fluid situation as the county has realized on numbers of COVID-19 cases have gone up. That has changed the way that they handle things. And then, of course, you know, all of the different uh, guidelines set upon by CDE and uh, Tony Thurman, who's our state superintendent, as they provide them information, uh, the fluidity of legalities, the fluidity of just feedback that they've received from districts, from families, from um, different employee uh, groups across the state, all of those things factor in in a collaborative way to try to make the best decisions available for each particular county since each county has different needs, just like each school has different needs, and each district has different needs. So that's really where we base our information is on the guidance we've received from our uh, local county and CDE agencies. And we have been provided um, some latitude in some areas, and um, we need to follow the guidance very strictly in others. So, the, you know, there's, there's no doubt that as, as positive as everything sounds, teachers and other staff members, administrators, there's some anxiety going on and some stress. Uh, but you know, part of what I said before is I've seen a lot of people just really step up to the plate. And like you said, it is a challenge. It's an opportunity to grow. And that's a big deal. And we really want our teachers to understand that part, that this is a growth opportunity for them. Right, absolutely. And I, I think we're all very sad about the circumstances uh, as to why this is all happening because we know there are people that are losing their lives. We know there are family members that are uh, getting ill. There are people who are recovering as well. But the circumstances are a challenge and that in and of itself produces some anxiety, especially if you listen to the news. Uh, our students definitely are feeling that way as well. And so we really want our teachers to know that one, we really appreciate all that they do. We know that this is a time that is you know, stressful, but again, I really see it as an opportunity for us to to be as one together, to collaborate, to work together, and to be flexible. I think we've really tried to be flexible. We're trying to, you know, make sure that the that um, everyone that we're working with, parents, students, teachers, everyone, understands that this is a time for grace, and we need to, you know, be have that grace with one another as we, you know have that productive struggle, as we make mistakes, as we figure out what works and doesn't work, as we have to change things all of a sudden, as we aren't perfect, this will be messy. And, you know, we're doing the best we can to do the best we can for everyone that we all serve. You know, on, on a side note, as I, I took a, about a three mile walk after uh, I was done looking at 5,000 emails today. And I was walking through a neighborhood and a kid across the street starts yelling, hey, I know you, I know you. And I go, you mean, you know me? He goes, yeah, you. And he goes, Mesquite. And I go, yeah, I've, I've, I, I go to Mesquite. And he goes, and so I asked him, I said, 
How right. is your homeschooling going? And you should have saw the look on his face. These kids, they don't want to be home. They want to be back at school. They absolutely do. And and I know that you know, I've had emails from parents. Uh, I've had emails from, um, you know, from teachers that have, you know, either had emails from families or from their students themselves just saying, you know, I miss you. And this is not their normal. This is, they, they like the routine. They may not always like everything about school or particular sessions or lessons or topics or content or, you know, kids are kids and we were all kids once in school as well. And there were things we liked more than others. However, I think that they, it's worth stability for them. Mm-hmm. We are a, a ray of sunshine for a lot of our students that we serve and we provide them with uh, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to fail, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to to learn about each other as well, not just the content and academics, but that social emotional piece of learning that we do at school is so important and that the peer relationships and, and just the cultural aspects and everything that comes with learning that is not just about academics, they also miss. And, um, you know, one of the parents asked me if it was really going to be till June. They knew that the governor had said June. They knew that uh, Tony Thurman had said June. And, and, and the reason why she was asking not be- was not because she was worried about having her kids home until June, but because her kids were crying that it was going to be till June. And so I think that that's a strong message for us to remember that what we do really makes a difference as educators and we really do empower lives and we, we serve in ways that sometimes we don't even realize we do. So my, my question for you, Elena, is um, if, you know, with this whole situation, what is the one lesson or the one takeaway through this whole thing that you've learned over the last few weeks or so? Um, that's a really, really good question. I think that, um, I think for, for me really it's about, you know, what I've learned is that the flexibility piece is really huge. And I think even looking back two weeks ago, there's things that we probably would have done, you know, differently had we known, but at the time we were working on the, the guidance that we, we were, you know, we were working on and receiving at the time. But I think if the, the one lesson is that I think sometimes we take flexibility and collaboration and opportunity for granted. And, uh, this really is an opportunity for us all. And I guess I completely agree. I know, I know that, uh, um, especially with all of our meetings and, and we've asked for flexibility, even something as minute as, you know, we hit a wrong button during our, our presentations and trying to get back on track. Well, I, I can definitely appreciate the whole idea of flexibility and collaboration, because I know that a lot of the teachers right now, they're missing a lot of that collaboration thinking, well, I'm separated from everybody, so how can I collaborate? And, and, and this is all before they learned about Zoom and all that stuff. How am I going to do this on my own? And I think uh, that flexibility uh, is, is a huge part of it. Well, and I think the lesson, too, that we can take away is that less, that lesson, learning, meeting, uh, even professional learning, doesn't have to be the way we've always thought of it. Uh, and this is definitely an opportunity for that. I know I keep saying opportunity because I think that how we view things really makes a difference. And, you know, I think this is an opportunity for us to model for our students and our families what we're always asking them to be, which is resilient and to persevere and to take risks and to be to be okay with not doing, you know, your best maybe on a test. You know, we use the, the whole... A productive struggle with students, but this is a productive struggle for us as well, all of us, because I know that I had to learn how to do Zoom. I had to learn a Google Classroom. I had to learn a lot of different things that I don't normally need to uh, need to do with what I do every day, but I've had to do it, and I've, and I've forgotten to mute my, my microphone, and I've forgotten to unmute my microphone, and I've forgotten, you know, different things, and I think that that's a, a lesson for all of us that we're really modeling for our students well, we ask them to be with habits of mind and citizenship and character. And these are all opportunities for us to view collaboration differently, for us to view resilience differently, and for us to really look at all our strengths, our collective strengths, and our students' collective strengths um, in a different way. You know, I, I can't agree 
uh, any more than that. Uh, Elena, I would, I'd like to thank you, Dan. Thanks you for joining us in and here they get to hear somebody else besides us, which. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for the invitation and for the opportunity. It's great to work with you on a, you know, I know I don't get to see you every day, but it's always nice to work with both of you. So. I appreciate it. We, we love what we Thank do. Thank you. And that's why we're, we're still doing it. I don't even know what time it is, this time at night. And, <laughs> and saying, let's do something for our, our teachers. And so we're so glad that you were able to call in, uh, share a little insight from behind the scenes and encouraging our teachers as we try to do too. Because I know sometimes we all might be struggling on the inside, but we want to show everybody uh, a different light. And I, I do think our teaching is going to be better when we come back than it has ever been before. Well, thank you both for all that you do. And, and, and a big thank you to all of our teachers uh, for all that they do every day for kids. And especially at this time when I know it, it's just a little bit more challenging than, than the usual. So thank you all. All right. Thank so, you, Elena. We appreciate it. So with that, we will all say right. goodbye. And uh, we're going to wrap up uh, this evening of special guest and rants. Um, Dan, <laughs> do you have anything to end us on here? Uh, I do. Just a real quick note. I put out an email earlier today, and this is, it's depending on when you're, re you're listening to this, this is Friday, right before we go into uh, the weekend. Uh, take a look at it. There's some important information in there about Zoom and especially about uh, recording. So really take a look at that. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to one of the coaches. So with that, I thank you for joining us tonight. And so... Uh, I usually start it with wherever you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever it is, I'd like to say goodbye from myself and Dan Hoffman. Reach out to your EdTech coaches. We want to help.